started I just started recording which is good um, okay okay I just took the attendance as well but you still do the attendance in uh, spectrum okay thank you for reminding me okay just go back to this um, uh, let's, this class for today all right so i just shared this uh statistical testing with you it's week seven. Oh, okay uh, I, I changed it for yours so yours will show week seven all right so uh why we do uh statistical testing anything that we learned from week one to week five is called descriptive statistics okay the frequency standard deviation mean are called simple descriptive statistics so we learned how to generate those parameters following that now we are doing statistical testing which means to say we are going to learn how to use those parameters that we got from the data from a crude data to make certain decisions okay so one of the examples of problems that we might have is, for example, we have a company is labeling their product to weigh on average one kg. So when we bought the product last time, it only weighed 0 0.925 kg. So we suspect the company is cheating. So we want to know whether it's it with our suspicion true or not. So if I put it on the other way, if I'm the company that is producing something, that weighs one kg. For example, let's say your sugar packet. Okay, our sugar packets are labeled as one kg. But if you notice, it's not just one kg. They actually have one kg plus minus your standard deviation. All your flour packets, sugar packets will have that plus minus. Okay, so I want to know if every of my uh, packet that I produce is one kg. Or is it lesser? Or is it more? Okay, so that could be a problem that I have. So I can be producing millions. I can be producing thousands. That's why they do data collection. They collect every bag, what is the weight like? And then you calculate the average. You calculate the standard deviation. And then you have a question about it. Is it true? My bags are one kg. Or is it true that some of it are lesser? Or is it true that some of it are more? So in this first question, we are suspicious if we are getting lesser product. So depending on what questions we have mind, if we have in mind, we will develop our hypothesis. Okay. So from the hypothesis, we will have one null hypothesis, a situation that we want to try. We are not sure. We are we are accusing that this hypothesis is cannot be true, may not be true. So it's innocent until proven guilty. So we are we are saying, okay, so we are giving you a chance to be innocent. So that's a that's a hypothesis that you're accusing of. And then you have an alternative which you think, which you suspect that is the hypothesis. So you have an alternative hypothesis. So when we have a question, we come up with the hypothesis first, and then we do the statistical testing, which is our class today. So after you do the statistical testing, you decide, you come to a decision whether can we accept the null hypothesis? That means what we thought was not true. What that has been claimed is true. Or can we reject the null hypothesis? Oh, what I thought is actually true. Okay, what they claim is not true. So that is the four steps in our statistical testing. So today we're going to do the simplest parts with one sample Z test, two sample Z test, where this one sample has only one mean. If you have two different samples, uh, two samples of the same population, and you have two means for that samples, then we can use two sample Z test. And then we can also use pair different T test. Okay. So uh, uh, Z test is uh, still the Z uh, confidence interval, the Z table uh, from the standard deviation that you used previously. This is the Z table that you used. Okay, 
So all this data has to be in a uh, standard distribution in order for you to do this statistical testings, which is why you learned it in your previous classes. Okay, so we also have an option to do T table, okay, T pet T test, and then we will also have uh, ANOVA where we do testings for different groups. That means this is a ANOVA is for bigger uh, set of data and you have bigger groups. And for this uh, statistical testing, you'll be doing F test. Okay, so you have Z test, T test, F test. But for all these testings, the most basic part is of you learning how to come up with your null and alternative hypothesis. That's why I told you this is the basis of all your uh, statistical testings. Okay. Okay, so before I move into this part, I now I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to explain to you some of this. Uh, I'm going to explain to you about this uh, hypothesis. I'll just go through the slide. Okay. Just give me a minute. Okay, back in. Okay, so what is null hypothesis? So null hypothesis is the one that states there is no relationship between measured and the independent variable. So you, didn't, you do not need to believe that the null hypothesis is true to test it. So you likely suspect that that null hypothesis you likely suspect there is relationship between a set of uh, variables. Uh, okay, okay. Actually, these words will not mean anything much to you. So I will go straight to the um, examples. And in the examples, I'll explain what these nodes are trying to tell you. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So first thing the null hypothesis says is say, the examples of null hypothesis so here we say it assumes there is no relationship between the measured phenomenon. So it's actually shown here. So if I say cats show no preferences for food based on shape, that means the shape of the food, the cat doesn't show any preferences. So it says, see, the null hypothesis usually uh, defies any relationship uh, between the variables. The variables here is the food shape. Plant growth is not affected by light color. Again, it defies the variable. Age has no effect on music ability. So it defies, it defies the uh, age parameter on the music ability. So this is usually the null hypothesis. So if I look at, uh, these are in, in words. So if our teens, if I were to come with a null hypothesis, are teens better than math than uh, at math than adults? So again, here we are looking at age. Here the question is asking if age affects ability in math. So null hypothesis will say there is no effect. It will always defy any relationship. So does taking aspirin reduce any chance of heart attack? So whether aspirin affects heart attack. So you'll say aspirin does not affect heart attack. 
do teens use cell phones to access internet more or adults? So here we want to know whether teens or adults use more internet. So here, so the null hypothesis will be age has no effect on cell phones. Any problem? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, doctor. Yes, yes. Okay, can hear you. you. Okay. Okay, so that's how we show, uh, that's, that's usually what null hypothesis is. And this is uh, qualitative. If you notice, there's no numbers here. But the examples I gave you has numbers. Okay, so let's see how we, how we state the null and the alternative for the numbers. So a researcher suspects that the exercise is correlated to weight loss. Assuming diet remains unchanged. So the average length of time to achieve a certain amount of weight loss is six weeks when a person works out for five times a week. The researcher wants to test whether weight loss takes longer to occur if the number of workouts is reduced to three times a week. Okay. So here you have, you are saying, someone is saying, if I work out five times, I will lose weight in six weeks, average length. So I want to find out if I work out less, will still will it take longer, longer than six weeks? So the the first thing to do is uh, the the before we go to the null hypothesis, the easiest way to do is to find the uh, alternative hypothesis. Okay. So before I come to this slide, I show you this uh, hypothesis. Oh, it's not here. Okay, the alternative hypothesis is the researcher want to test whether the weight loss takes longer. So you believe the alternative, your belief is if it will take longer. So your alternative is if it will take longer than six weeks. That's why your H1 or you can also term it as HA where average is bigger than six weeks. Okay, so that is your, the first step to writing the null hypothesis is to find the alternate hypothesis. It just makes your life easier. So if I want to know whether it takes bigger than six weeks, so my null hypothesis will be if it is lesser than or equals to six weeks. Okay, right. See, the same question, I can ask you slightly differently and your null hypothesis will change to this. Your null hypothesis can be mu is equals to 6. When? If I change the question, okay, where I don't talk about the weeks. Okay, here I say my workouts are five times a week. So it takes uh, five times a week. So I take six weeks to lose. So the researcher wants to test if the weight loss takes longer to occur, regardless of the times of the week. That means you don't change this parameter. If you don't change this parameter, the only thing you want to know is whether it is going to be six weeks or it is going to be more than six weeks. Okay, if you don't change this parameter. If that, if the question is like that, then your null hypothesis will still be the same, bigger than six, but your, uh, sorry, your alternative will still be bigger than six, but your null hypothesis will become mu is equals to six. That is the difference. Here you have a parameter that is changing. For this question, you have a parameter that is changing. Because you, it is, you reduce it to three times a week, you want to know whether the weight loss occurs uh, it takes longer time. So your null, your alternative is still bigger than six, but your null hypothesis, it could be lesser than or equals to six because there's a one changing parameter.
Doctor, I think you muted your microphone. Hey, did someone accidentally muted it because I've been talking continuously, right? Okay. I don't know where did I stop. So where should I start from? The don't worry. Doctor, now is mute again. I did not mute it. I don't know why it's muting automatically or unless someone mistakenly press. Okay, keep notifying me. I don't know why this is happening. Where am I? Okay. So a pharmaceutical firm maintains that the average time for a certain drug to take effect is 15 minutes. So there's only one value here. There is no at least or there's no more than. So there's just saying the average time is 15 minutes. So your null hypothesis, your, you will challenge. I don't think it's 15 minutes. You can say it's more, you can say it's less, but there is the question doesn't have any terms that gives you a hint that you have to use either more or less there's no any terms that's just that it says the average is 15 minutes so you can either you can only use null hypothesis is 15 minutes uh, your alternative is not 15 minutes it can be more it can be less the mean starting salary of graduates is higher than uh, 50,000 per annum so you have this higher than 50,000 per annum so your alternative will directly become mu is higher than 50,000. So if is, you, you're already looking at 50,000, so you don't want to look for anything that is less than 50,000. So you just say, you're just challenging if it is equals to 50,000. Probably it's just 50,000. Okay, so same goes to the, the first one. So he's saying at least 1,000, you do the uh, alternative first. At least 1,000 means is more than 1,000. That's what he's claiming. So you are saying the, the null hypothesis will be equals to 1,000. Okay, so these are uh, some of the examples and I actually shared with you another set of example. But before I move to that, uh, uh, there are some incidents that can happen when we do this statistical analysis. So let's say we uh, come to a decision that H0 is false, is not true. So when it is not true, you should actually reject the decision. So if, you, if it is false and you rejected the decision, then it is a correct decision. But if it is actually false, but you somehow calculated, probably you had some, uh, your faulty sample, because faulty sample will give you a, fault, uh, a faulty descriptive uh, parameters like your standard deviation and mean can be uh, that means faulty that means it falls into the uh, outside your uh, confidence limit so it's false but then you uh, decided to accept that means you do not reject it then you are making a type 2 error you have a chance of making a type 2 error because all these decisions are solely based on samples that we choose to make a conclusion about a population. And, and that samples can change. So your statistical decision is only based on your sample. Okay, so the, the decision can change in accordance to your number of samples, quality of your samples, it can change. And let's say your decision is actually true, your H0 is true, 
but then you decide to reject it. If you reject it, then you're making a type 1 error. This is statistical terms. Uh, let's say there is some error that we made, then we, we, we define, okay, a type 1 error has occurred. So a different sample population has revealed this decision, the correct decision. Okay, so these are the two important uh, points uh, for you to uh, understand from this uh, lecture. Okay, uh, this one you can read. Okay, so let's look into more examples to see for, for your understanding. Okay. So if uh, this, these are examples on null and alternative uh, hypothesis on why we use this. Okay, ah, this is the notes that tells you. Uh, in a hypothesis test, sample data is evaluated to arrive a decision about some type of claim. If certain conditions about the samples are satisfied, then the claim can be evaluated for the population. That's why we do a hypothesis test. We claim it for a sample. Then we want to evaluate if it is valid for a population, the bigger number of people. So in a hypothesis test, we evaluate the null hypothesis, typically H0. If it is not rejected, the null is not rejected unless the hypothesis shows otherwise. So the null statement must always contain equality, equals to or less than equals to or bigger than equals to. Always write the alternative hypothesis with HA or H1 and use less than, greater than, or not equals to symbol. These are the symbols that we use. So if we reject the null hypothesis, we assume there is enough evidence to support the alternative. So you have to reject the null first to support the alternative. Alternative is usually what you suspect of. When the, when the producer claims it's 1 kg, you suspect it's less than 1 kg. Only then you can, uh, you can accept your alternative hypothesis. So never state uh, that a claim is proven true or false because it is the hypothesis testing is highly dependent on probability loss. That means probability loss is actually how you choose your sample is, is, uh, is based on a probability law. So it's not absolute certainty that your null or alternative hypothesis that you accept or reject is not absolute certainties. It depends on the sample that you have collected. So your claims are only true for that particular sample. That's very important for you to uh, stress in any of your uh, reports on uh, statistical testing. Okay, so let's go through this uh, example. Uh, to further enhance your understanding on the on how to term your H0 and HA. So if H0, no more than 30% of the registered voters in Santa blah, blah, blah election, so they said no more than 30%, that means your H0 is lesser than equals to 30%. This first example is literally they have given you what is H0 and HA. You are not the deciding person. So this is just to learn how to use uh, these symbols okay so more than 30 percent of the registered voters in santa are voted in primary election so more than 30 percent so this is more than it's not equals to so this just to learn how to use the equation symbol okay let's try this so a medical trial is conducted to test water whether or not a new medicine reduces cholesterol by 25 percent so it's, it's either it reduces or it doesn't and you only have one value. So your null hypothesis is equals to 0 0.25 and your alternative will be not equals to because whether or not, that's all. You don't have, um, uh, it's less than or more than. That's why you use these symbols, okay? So let's say we want to test whether the mean GPA is different from two out of four. So again, this one also uh, is direct. They just want to know whether it's two or something else. So your H0 is equals to 2. H alternative is not equals to 2. It can be less, it can be more. It's, that, that's what the question wants. Okay. So we want to test 
whether the mean height of eight graders is 66 inches. So state the hypothesis. Again, they just want to know whether it's 66 or it is not 66. That's why it is equals to or not equals to. Simple. Okay, let's go to the next example. We want to test if the college students take less than five years. Okay, now you're getting, uh, there, there's something that you want to know. They, they want to know which direction the average is moving. They want to know if the students takes less than five years. You want to test if it takes them less than five years. That's what you want to know. So that becomes your alternative hypothesis. I want to know if it is less than five years on the average. So the null alternative hypothesis are, it could be more than or equals to five years. Okay, so, okay. So if let's say the same question actually told us uh, the average student takes five years uh, to complete uh, college. So we want to test if college student takes less than five years to graduate. Then your null hypothesis can be mu is equals to five because you already know the, uh, alter, the average is five. You just want to know if it can be less. Very specific. Okay. Then we want to test if it takes fewer than 45 minutes to teach a lesson plan. So my alternative is automatically fewer than 45 minutes. So the null will be bigger than equals to because there's, there's no average given to you here. If there's an average given to you, then you can actually stick to it and say it's only equals to 45. Okay. Right. This one. You want to test if the percentage of students who take advanced placement exam is more than 6.6. .6. So obviously, HAP is bigger than uh, this 6.6. .6. So what is your null hypothesis? So you only have one value. Okay, this is not an average. Yeah? It just states they didn't say it's an average. So this is why you are using lesser than equals to. If it says on a state the test, they give you on average 40% pass. About 40% pass the test on first try. This is what this is a, a data a information they give you. And we want to test if more than 40% pass on the first try. So this one is obviously what you want to know. This is easy to do. So your alternative is P is more than 0 0.4. And here, only in null hypothesis, you have to decide whether you want to use less than equals to or equals to. So because it's already given 40% passed on the first try, so you already have a value. So you use equals to. If you don't have this value, and you just want to know, we want to know if more than 40% pass on the first try, then your P will be less than equals to 0 0.4. Okay, so this is how you do your uh, H0 and H A or H1. Okay, so any questions on this? Do you understand? Don't tell me you can't hear me again. Okay, that was some time back. Okay. Okay. Do you get an idea about uh, null hypothesis and uh, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis? Can you can you give me some feedback on the chat? Thank you. Thank you, Zenfeng and Munir. Thank you, Hadi. Okay, thank you, Morgan. All right. So if you, it should roughly give you an idea of what it is. And if you still don't understand, go through it again. And then you can go through some exercise. You can just uh, go through the videos that I gave you. Those those give you some examples as well. 
then uh, it sh you, sh you should be able to do it because I've already given you the gist of it. Okay. All right. Now let's move on to statistical testing. So this is going to be fast. Um, I told you I'll try to finish in an hour, but I probably take extra another extra 15 minutes. But this one, uh, I read through this this morning. So I see it quite step by step. And I don't think you're going to have any problem. Usually students have problem with this null hypothesis. Okay, for this uh, statistical testing, uh, you will have, you, I, you just need to know what to do with the, uh, how to come to a decision point. So I'll stress on this part, which, and I also stress on which test do you do for different types of uh, problems. Okay. So you already know why we do statistical testing, because if we have a doubt on a population, then we use the information from a sample and we make a decision for a population. Okay, this was uh, also, uh, this also answers uh, the question on tutorial that you had last week, uh, you had yesterday, yesterday someone asked me, you asked which sample standard deviation that you need to use. So if you use, if you notice, you were to use the population standard deviation. Why? This is what statistical testing is. So we collect a sample. We do find out what is the standard deviation, what is the mean average, what is the mean of that sample. But when we want to make a decision for the whole population, you use the standard deviation of the whole population and you also use the uh, data from the sample. Okay. Okay. Let me bring you direct to the, to what I'm saying. So one of the, uh, one of the tests that we, we will be doing is one sample T test. So we will be using the sample mean. This is sample mean. This is the value that you doubt. This is your hypothesis value that you doubt. And then you have a population standard deviation and the number of sample size. So please take note of the term population and sample. They have a meaning. When we use population and when we use sample, it means uh, population is bigger and sample is a subset of the population. Okay. Please let me know if I'm muted. Okay. Because I'm not, uh, I'm not looking at that uh, team's screen. I'm looking at the word screen that I'm sharing with you. Okay, so so we need both this data. So it's actually meant to, it's not meant to confuse you. Why do we need a standard deviation for the sample is, we want to know if the sample that we collected is valid, has a quality. If let's say the sample that I have collected has got very big standard deviation, that means uh, it varies varies a lot. The whole sample varies a lot. So if I have only 45 and then it varies a lot, uh, that means uh, I am bound to make some mistake. That means I'm bound to have some extreme uh, values. But if I have a big sample and then I have a bigger standard deviation of that sample, so that shows the quality of the sample. So it's, it's widely distributed. So it just tells me uh, an information uh, descriptive statistical information about that particular sample. But when it comes to statistical testing, I need to use population standard deviation and information from the samples, the size and the sample mean to make decisions on my hypothesis. Okay, so uh, when do we use one sample Z test? So this is when uh, the test requires a normally distributed population. The population is normal. This is important. All your statistical testings require normal distribution. And you know the standard deviation. Okay. So you only have one value each. You have a herd of cow, for example. You had a herd of cow. 75 cows were randomly selected and weighed. This is your sample. Your herd is, this is your population. This is your sample. Okay. So your N is equals to 75. And then uh, the selected cows, that means 75 out of the one, 1,500 has gained an average of 6.1 kg. The average for the sample. So this uh, X is the average for the sample, 
if the standard deviation of weight gain of the entire herd. So entire herd means population. 1,500 is 6.8. Test the hypothesis that the average weight gain per month was more than 5 kg. So your, your easiest way is to do your alternative first. More than 5 kg. You want to know whether it's more than 5 kg. So it also states that they just want to know more than 5 kg. You don't want to know whether it's less or more. So they have, that means the null hypothesis is saying it's equals to 5 kg. Okay. Ah, because it states the average uh, is five. That means in this is also is you. There's only one value, so you accept it as whether it's equals to five or is more than five. This is what they want to know whether it is more than five. So there's one mean, one uh, standard deviation, one sample of the whole cow. So you use one sample t-test. This is the equation, and you put in all your information here. And you get your Z table value, which is 1.40. So if you go back to 1. Point, uh, okay, I teach you the easiest way first. Huh? Okay, so this is 1.40. You omit this first, yeah? Later, I come back to this. So if this is 1.40, this one didn't tell you a confidence limit. So if, it, if I don't give you, in, even in exam, if I don't give you a confidence limit, it is automatically 95% confidence limit. Because in all our cases, we accept 95% confidence limit. Only when it's stringent, like medicines, uh, cosmetics, you go for 99% confidence limit. So if it is 95% confidence limit, my Z value should be between 1.645 to negative 1.645. Okay, where do I show it? First of all, how do I get the 1.645 and how do I get the, okay, how do I get the 1.645? So I want 95% uh, confidence limit. So I look for 95%. Okay, so it's here. So you have to do some extrapolation to reach your nine, or oh, it's just five here and five here. So it's half, it's half. So 1.64. Five. So in where's the standard curve? Okay. So what it means is that uh, if I want ninety-five percent confidence, my values should be within. Usually, if you have your uh, standard deviation, okay. If it is ninety-five percent confidence, means two parts. You have you have you have a range. Okay, right. I have uh, I have something I can show you. But this is for two tail, but I see if I can use it for single test first. Ah, okay, good. So if I have a standard deviation, okay, so this is for 99%. So if I am using it for 95%, okay, this is 95. With this tail, if this is 95, this plus this is 0. It's 5%, no, 5%. This plus this is 5%. So each side will be 0.25%. So 95% means it is between 1.645 plus positive 1.645 to negative 1.645. So if my null hypothesis, if my null hypothesis is within that range, uh, where am I? This one, example one. If this is within that range, okay, I cannot reject it. Okay, this is a single tail test. Single tail means you're only looking at bigger than. Okay, if uh, two tail means you're looking at both bigger and also the smaller part. Okay, this one you only bother about bigger than. So this is a single tail test. So you cannot reject it because the value calculated is within the range of 1.645 and negative 1.645. So it's within the range. So you cannot reject it. So if you cannot reject it, it means 
uh, that means here you will state that the null hypothesis cannot be rejected. So you cannot accept that uh, the weight gain per month is more than five months. No, no five kg. You cannot accept this because you cannot reject this null hypothesis. Okay, so if I convert, okay, now I move to another way of explaining this. One was by explaining uh, the Z value. If I convert this 1.4 from the Z table, I will get this much of percentage. Okay, let me bring you back to Z table. Okay, 1.4 is equals to 0 0.9192, which converts to 91.9192. 92%. That means I only have 91.92% confidence that the weight is uh, bigger than uh, 5. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, so this 1.4 means 91.92%. Okay, wait. Let me bring it back. So if, uh, sorry, this is for equals to. So if I have 9.9192, that means the bigger than 5. This, sorry, this is for equals to 5. So for bigger than 5, it will be 1 minus the bigger than 5. Uh, equals to 5. 1 minus equals to 5. So bigger than 5 is 0.08%. So what does this p-value means? This means there is probability of 8.8% that this decision is incorrect. Which decision? The decision that bigger than 5% is incorrect is 8%. For 95% confidence, this value should be lesser than 5%. If this value is lesser than 5%, we can accept the alternative hypothesis. We don't want to make an incorrect decision which has 8% of being incorrect. It, it can be 8% of being incorrect. We don't want. If it is 5% or if it is 4%, assuming here you get about 96 and this is 0 0.04, you can reject the null hypothesis and accept your alternative hypothesis. There's two ways to see it. Either you use this, uh, this value and this value, you see whether it falls within it or it falls outside. If it is, if you want to accept this decision, this value should be bigger than 1.645 or negative, uh, bigger because it's one way, right? So you only talk about positive. So bigger means this will become 1.7 or 1.646 is already bigger. So once this is bigger, that means it's outside that 95% range, you can reject the null hypothesis and accept your alternative hypothesis. This is what this is how you make your decision, and this is the important part that I want you to understand. Okay, right. So we have we can have another example. Okay, so uh, please read it, and assuming you you know that this is your null and alternative hypothesis. Okay. Uh, alamak, no, uh, you might. Okay, uh, I might have to explain this because it can be two tailed. The above one in single tail. Single tail means bigger than. That means you're only talking about. Okay, so, yeah. so this is single tail. You're only talking about you in your. Do I have a 95%? I have, it's all 99. Okay, so if I, if I, because I was talking about bigger than, so this is your middle point. So if I'm talking about bigger than, I'm only concerned about this tail. Why tail? This was 1.65. Anything outside 1.65, that means my alternative, I can reject the null. Okay, so this is single tail because there's no, the null hypothesis was bigger than. But if it is not equals to, that means if I just use equals to or not equals to, it can be bigger, it can be lesser. Then I'm talking about two tails. So this is called two tails hypothesis. 
So this, uh, for this two tail hypothesis, I have this whole slide, a uh, whole uh, PDF. You can read up and uh, uh, understand what is uh, what it means. Okay. Okay. So let's go to the two tail. Oh, taking. How do we know it's a two tail? Two tail is when you don't have this. Okay. It's either less or more then is one tail. Even if it is less, then you're taking the negative part of it. If it is equals to, it becomes two tail. How do you know it's two tail? Okay, for example, you have a mean score of 68 and standard deviation of 13. This is one sample. Then you have another sample, 70 students participated. Okay, it's N, oh, this is the average of the population. So it's held annually, and the mean score so far for the population is 68 and 13. This year, 70 students, this is a sample, 70 students participated and the group has a mean score of 65. This is the mean of the sample. So is the group is typical of others who have participated in the competition. So you want to know if the mean is always 68 for the population. This is a sample. So for the population, when you add the 70 students back into this total population, let's say it's 20 years, that means you add up all the 20 years, will you still be getting 68? That's the question. So your null hypothesis is equals to 68 and your alternative is not 68. Okay. So this becomes a two tail because it can be more, it can be less. Okay. So for a two tail, you have a balance, your tail is, uh, if it is 95% confidence, you have a balance of 5%. So you have two tails, so 0 0.25 on either side. So your Z value is 1.96. For 95% confidence, you have 1.96. So uh, your the Z value that you're going to calculate should be within negative 1.96 to, neg to positive 1.96. So after... So here, your mean, you always use your sample mean. This is your sample mean. Then you have your hypothesis that you want to know. Then you have a standard deviation of the population. Follow the formula. Population standard deviation. Then you have a number of your sample. Then you find your set value. Negative 1.93. This is within the 1.96. It's bigger than negative 1.6, so it's within the curve. So the null hypothesis uh, of population mean is 68 cannot be rejected because it's still within the curve. There is no evidence that they can be different from the previous competitors. Okay, so here you have one standard deviation, and then you have a sample. So this is still one sample t test, but two tail. Okay, this one is one sample z test with single tail. Then you have two sample z tests, which is comparing two means. That means you have two population, two samples. So you have a whole standard deviation of 14.1 for male donors, and 9.5 for female donors. Then you have samples that you take from this population. You take 75 males, 50 males. So you have two standard deviations, two sample means. So you want to know what is the likelihood that the means are the same for both. So your null hypothesis is either equals to or when you minus, it becomes zero. It can either be this or this. Both are the same. So in this case, then you have two, uh, for, the, for the human population, you have two sample means. Then your formula changes slightly, but it's still about the same. Uh, this is your formula. So insert your parameters accordingly and you'll find your Z value. So again, what is the confidence that we are looking at? It's not given. If it is not given, we are looking at 95% confidence. Okay. So uh, when it's 95% confidence, uh, this should be between, because 95% confidence is fixed, negative 1.96 and negative, uh, positive 
So in this case, it's negative 2.37. It is smaller than uh, negative 1.96. It falls outside the region, which means to say Uh, which means to say you can reject the null hypothesis. Will lead to the rejection of null hypothesis of no difference. That means your alternative uh, hypothesis becomes true, which means there is difference. Okay. One way is using the Z value. Another way I told you is using the percentage. So if it is 95 percentage, so you have 5%, anything below 5%, you can reject the null hypothesis. So this is below 5%. This is 1 minus uh, 95%, uh, percent, which is 5%. So negative 2.37, if you convert it in the Z table, okay, if you convert it in the Z table, it becomes uh, 0 0.089. So I bring it back to the Z table just in case for those who might not uh, understand. Uh, what was the value again? 2.37. So if I go back to the Z table, 2.37. 7 is the next row. 2.37 is 99.11. That means uh, the null hypothesis is 99.11. So the alternative is 1 minus 99.11. Uh, that will give you 0 0.0089. Okay, so if this is less than 0.05%, then you can reject the null hypothesis and you can accept your alternative hypothesis. Okay, so in practice, two samples that test is not often used because the two population standard deviation are usually unknown. Usually it's difficult to find the standard deviation of two population. Okay, like, you, like if you want to talk about the state, you cannot actually get every single female or every single male of that population to get your accurate uh, standard deviation. So usually we will use a sample, sample standard deviations and the t, t, t distribution to test this kind of uh, values or data. This is when you're doing a research and all you have to decide which, uh, which testing that you want to use for your sample and why. Okay. So in the case where getting the two population standard deviation is difficult, we do pet different t tests okay so this is again the same uh, it follows the same rules but you have a different table to use which is t table okay you have a t table so if you for example we have a, a question and we want to know what is the average height that a stock grows so you have 10 stocks you have before and after so in this case you have to do your descriptive statistics first you have to find the difference of this uh, before and after. So you have to find the difference and compute the mean and standard deviation of this sample. Then your null hypothesis is you want to know whether it grows. It grows on average of this, but you want to know if uh, it, if the fertilizer, wait, wait, the stock would have grown, would have grown an average of six inches during that time, even without the fertilizer. So you want to know whether the fertilizer worked. So your hypothesis is mu is equals to 6 or bigger than 6. Then you follow this one, uh, the parameters. So you take the mean. Mean came from this sample. This is your hypothesis. Um, S is, what is S? Sample standard deviation. That means you must have calculated your standard deviation from this data. And then your number of sample is you have 10 stocks. You find your T statistics. Okay. All right. If you notice here, you need to know your degree of freedom. Why? You use your degree of freedom in the T table. So we got a T value of 2.1. So what does it mean? 
we this the test is one tail because you're only asking whether the fertilizer increases so only one side of it not reduce it so the critical value from the t table you look for ah, another thing they didn't give you or they did give you the significance level 0 0.5 okay so you want it's 95 percent confidence so in the t table you look for nine degree of freedom degree of freedom is always total number of samples minus so let's go to the T table. Remember, you must use T table. Huh? This is Z table. You have to use T table. In T table, you have distribution. Uh, you have a degree of freedom. So 10 minus 1 is 9. Then you look for, this is your level of confidence. Commonly used level of confidence. So this is for, um, this is for 95%. One tail. This is for two-tailed. This is 99%, one-tailed. This is two-tailed, or 99%. And this will be 90%, 80%, 70%, 60%. 60%. So single-tailed, degree of freedom of 9, and uh, single-tailed, 95%, falls at 1.833. Okay, what does it mean? One point eight three three. So because the computed value, which is two point one, is outside one point eight three, so the null hypothesis can be rejected. So it's provided that the fertilizer caused the corn to grow more than if it has not been, it had not been fertilized. So the fertilizer does have an impact. Okay. So it only gave an impact of if you because from this data you will find out that your mean see the difference is only from the mean and your statistics is only 1.36 inches 7.36 the mean minus 6 is only 1.36 but it is already statistically significant that the growth is bigger than 6 with the fertilizer. Okay, then these are the type 1, type 2 errors, which I explained just now in the slide, so you can read through it again. And uh, uh, so we have gone through Z test, we've gone through T test, and we have one more to go through, which is the F test, F test. So it's the same thing, it's just that you have more than two, uh, two means. Then you use analysis of variance, ANOVA. Okay, so it's the same thing. I'm going to leave it to you uh, to go through this yourself. So I just quickly browse through. So for example, if you would like to know whether one kg of granulated sugar bags for, from three different hypermarkets, you see it starts from three. So anything more than two, you start using ANOVA. So this H0 and HA can be more than two. So I'm just giving you an example of three. It can be five, it can be 10. So because it can even be hundreds, this is the ANOVA that we are going to use in our, um, in the software, design of experiment software that you're going to learn after the test. You're going to use, it is ANOVA with a lot more parameters. That means it's, it's not just three. There are a lot more parameters and you're going to use the software to calculate the ANOVA for you. And you are going to be the one who make the decision of hypothesis based on the ANOVA output. Okay, which is why you need to learn how ANOVA calculates the information, uh, calculates the data and what information it presents to you. Okay, so this is the basis of your, uh, of the, advanced software that we are going to learn, like, learn later. Okay, so for three hypermarket, uh, you, want to, uh, you want to know whether your hypothesis was true or not. So you want to say that all of them are same one kg. Okay, we use uh, one way ANOVA because you want to know whether if it is lesser. No, they didn't say whether it's less or more. So the question must have said 
uh, they are claiming you would like to know whether one kg granulated sugar bags uh, from the three hypermarkets are the same. That's all. You only have one information. And you have 100 bags. 100 bags from each of these hypermarkets. So you have 300 bags. So your null hypothesis is they are the same. Your alternative is they are not the same. That's it. So it's a two-tailed. It can be less. It can be more. Okay. So these are the steps for you to find out. So first, you for the test statistics, you have to uh, get the F uh, value. So F value can be calculated by mean square between the groups and mean square within the groups. And this critical value that is the confidence limit can be 95% or 99% unless it is given. If it is not given, you stick to 95%. But this example will explain to you for both 99, uh, sorry, this is 99, this is 95. Okay. So again, you use the same method uh, to use the F table. So I've uh, shared the F table separately. Okay. I've shared the F table separately. Uh, you can uh, use the F table in a similar way. And then you do the relevant calculation, find the mean square between the groups and then within the groups. And you make your decisions. Okay, so though there's an example given here. So the, it's already calculated the average, the number of uh, sample and the standard deviation and how you calculate each of these parameters. Okay, how do you calculate variation between groups, variation within groups? Then use both those values to calculate your F statistics, 5.67. And using that 5.67 from F table for DFW947, okay, so that means you also have degree of freedom. You have to find your critical value and make your decision. Okay, so I'm going to let you to read through this. So you have a, a sample here and I have exercise of ANOVA for you here. Okay, I have exercise for ANOVA and I also have the answers for this attached to it as well. So I want you to go through it all and do this uh, ANOVA assignment. Yeah, I can stop here. Okay, uh, let me just show you the F table. It's already in spectrum. The F table is already in spectrum. You use it in the same way. Okay, you have a probability. So in this case, you're using the tail size. Okay, this is the tail size. This is the degree of freedom. Okay, degree of freedom. The, okay, here the degree of freedom is here. Then degree of freedom is here. Okay. Then you, we will have to uh, estimate. We have to, uh, what should I say? Extrapolate some of the values. Okay. So I'm going to let you try first. If you have any questions, uh, you can always ask me. So your test is until the, it's without ANOVA. I think there's no ANOVA. Without ANOVA, but there is uh, the t-test. All the one sample t-test, two sample t-test, and pet t-test. Uh, ANOVA, I, I don't, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't have ANOVA so far. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I'll just reconfirm if my questions have ANOVA. So far, as far as I remember, there's no ANOVA. But I'll, I'll definitely confirm it with you by today. Uh, so you have any questions, you post it on uh, WhatsApp as usual. I, can, I will also create a forum uh, if you want to discuss it on Spectrum. And I liked it the other day when you have questions and you have friends who shared your, uh, what you is correct and also that is good uh, please continue to uh, do that okay so that's all my class for today you think you can pick up from where i left i didn't go through in detail 
of the ANOVA because they are the same as the other two. Can you pick up? Could you give it a try? <laughs> okay, thank you for your thumbs up. Okay, so uh, I think I'll leave you with this here first. Uh, go through it, do the assignment. I gave the assignment due date uh, on 8th of December. 7th is our test uh, so that you don't have to rush through it, but I would want you to attempt it because you will be doing the other, the others are also in the test. Uh, I'll tell you what, I think I'll include the ANOVA as well into the test. So it makes it easy. It's included. Okay, it's included. So ask me the questions. It's until the ANOVA testing. Any questions about the test? Okay, if you have any question, feel free to put it up in the WhatsApp chat or in the spectrum. You can email me, you can ask, and I'm here to answer you. Okay, I'll just take the attendance again. Okay, done. All right, okay, I'm done with the lecture for today. Uh, if you have any questions, Dr. just to reconfirm the test will include only ANOVA, right? other parts of this. Oh, no, no, it's until ANOVA. All weeks, uh, it's week one to week seven. Week one to week seven. Until ANOVA. Everything that we have learned so far. Okay, mainly it will be from uh, week one until the the test. Anoa probably I'll be testing you uh, very basically, probably not in full. But I want you to learn until Anoa because it's important for me to take you to the next phase. So you have to understand these parts. Hmm. Okay, week one to week seven, all of it. Okay, all right, that's all. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, please ask me any questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me WhatsApp in the group and we will discuss that out. Uh, thank you. I hope uh, you have a good time following through all your other e-learnings. It's actually really odd just not looking at your face and not physically understanding your reactions. Uh, I'm actually missing that. I'm just looking at my computer screen and that's not really fun. And I don't even get to know you. So, okay. Happy learning. See you next week. Bye. Oh, please answer my questions, yeah? My survey questions, please.